All right, now, Stephen Johnson is gonna be our next speaker, and he, I, he and I met each other at Fuller Seminary exactly 30 years ago. He came when we started teaching the signs and wonders with John Wimber, so I said he went through an entire paradigm shift, and now he and his wife, Kim, lead, lead the uh, Freedom Outpost in Valdosa, Georgia. And so the Freedom Outpost is a growing apostolic center. He might tell us something about this, but he has an incredible, incredible visual introduction to what an apostolic center is. Let's welcome Stephen Johnson. You hear me okay? Okay. I want to thank Peter for having me here, Chuck. We're aligned apostolically with Chuck and Peter and Doris. Um, we did create something called the Freedom Outpost. Not be before we'd heard that there was a word from Chuck about that. It had been prophesied over us. And uh, so we walked that out. Inco got the website incorporated as that and then began to work in things not knowing what we were really doing as far as being an apostolic center but that's become apparent. Two years ago and three months a friend spoke a word over us when we were trying to figure out what what we're doing and um, that has been percolating and materializing now over that time and that was in the year I in bait 5772 the year of the house and new vision. And I'm bringing it to you now. We've kept it kind of quiet because I believe this year of the door, God's bursting it forward. And in this way, where it says there, where there is no vision, what? People, people perish or the people cast off restraint. Vision, often if you ask somebody about a vision statement, that's where they'll go. They'll give you a long phrase or something. I think part of the challenge we've had today, particularly with men not being there, is we've lost the, the image part, the actual vision. We've gotten lost in a sea of words and we need to see pictures. So what I'm gonna see, encourage you to do a lot is actually gonna be looking at the screen rather necessarily than me because it's this which imprints, okay? If you go back and look at the Hebrew and everything, that word about vision is about what you see. It is about prophecy. It's about getting that visualization in a quick way because when someone asks you, what's the difference between a church and an apostolic center, how quickly are you gonna be able to express it? And God dropped this into our laps two years ago. So let me just show you. When we go to pictures about our identity in Jesus, oh, I forgot to put my timer. I get 10 minutes is all to do this, okay? Because Peter said, how long do you need? I said, I can do it in 10 minutes. Well, okay, I'm going to be challenged. Lots of great images in Scripture about who we are, that we are his craftsmanship. Indeed, we are his sheep. We are, look at the child, right? We're a child of the king, Okay, we are the salt of the earth. We're family. We are joint heirs with Christ. Okay, we are an ambassador. That's a seal. Okay, we are in the army of God. Okay, there's the bride. That has some weird things for us. We know it's about the church. We look at it individually. As guys, we often challenged with that a little bit. Okay, but when we look at people and say, what is the church? This is sort of the default image that comes to mind. And then you ask people, and who, who are those that go to church, and this is what we get? <laughs> yeah? And you know, this was a model, and there's truth in it, but it's too limiting. And so most of the people, when we went down into, into Georgia, we met wonderful people, good Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists, Charismatics, Pentecostals. This is still a large part of the identity. So church was a place that you went. And then you had a poor rundown shepherd who's trying his, just breaking his heart trying to care for all the sheep, trying to keep them from button heads and biting each other. And then when they go out the door, trying to keep them from being devoured by wolves, right? And so you teach on how to keep your coat clean, how not to shed on other sheep, right? Okay, there's a lot of things. It's, it's well intended, okay? It really is. And it's from the heart. And a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into putting those structures in. But this wasn't adequate. And we started talking to people about things of warfare and how to fight that, about the seven mountains in culture, about moving in the times and seasons and aligning with the Lord. We started talking about one new man, and they're like, one new what? Okay? 
we started talking about five-fold ministry, and Robert will do a teaching tomorrow that, that I've seen before that is phenomenal because, again, it's a parable. It lets you see what it is. But none of these were able to capture for us then a visualization of what is the body moving forward? What is this new thing? So I was on a phone call with a, a friend of mine, Jerry Hardis, and he said this, you're not like some institutional church. You're more like an aircraft carrier. People fly in and get what they need and then fly out to their appointed spheres. So here it is, prophetically, this is it. It's not stuck, it's not stationary, it's not limited by four walls, it's not a holding pen for sheep. Instead, it, it carries the heirs of the kingdom to do the work. And so it's armed and it's an agile platform. The word platform is really important. And it's moving the heirs. And because it's moving the heirs, you know what that makes it? It makes it an aircraft carrier. You're getting this, right? And it's for one reason, to project the power of kingdom. It's not about just protecting the sheep, it's projecting the power. An aircraft carrier has the ability to take the airs and see the power of the kingdom projected way out there, and it survives for the airs. It is to facilitate and give them a place to land, and I'm gonna just show you briefly what that. By the way, this comes from a, a Northrop Grumman ad. I'm gonna show you what the bottom caption says, 90,000 tons of diplomacy. Because here's the reality, where you have an apostolic center, where you have an aircraft carrier, you are pressing out that into the territory and it affects the entire thing. Okay? You realize that it shifts the atmosphere. So I've gotta pick this up. Let me give you some points here as it goes. Okay, it is most flexible platform that they have in warfare. It goes where it matters, when it matters, into harm's way. We're no longer about keeping everybody safe. You have to be willing to go into harm's way to take the tough stance, to project the power of kingdom. It's a ship of war, but it has a mission of peace, of shalom, of wholeness. You're getting this, right? In this model, by the way, every person has a mission. And every person is armed and dangerous and is baked into their DNA. Okay, we want to come and bring that out and perk that out, help them identify it, help them develop it so they're walking in their mission. It's a platform for those who are already sent. Do you get that? There's a sending aspect, but they've already, the reason they're showing up on your carrier is they've already been sent. But they're in need of alignment, of support, of training, of fuel, of repair, and intel on the battle. This all comes together in the carrier. Now, how do we still, oops, sorry, how do we still function? We're still doing the worship. We're still doing prophecy. We're still ministering. But we keep this clear about what's happening when people are together. So, briefly, this is what happens every week, and it's happening to you right now. This is an aircraft carrier, agreed? Yeah. Right now, you came into land. You know what? That's the most terrifying, hard thing to do. My guess is there are a number of you who aren't here. How am I speaking to you then? But anyway, because you had problems landing. It's the toughest part, the level of warfare that goes on. So you land, you find a place. By the way, that landing, it takes place with a tail hook. It is deep into the core of you and you choose. You've got to move because it's moving. And you find it and it connects with you. Then of course, some of you land well and some not so well and we have to hose you down. <laughs> then of course, there's a lot of us need repair. It's an ongoing basis. You're in a battle, we expect it. Of course, you've got to be recalibrated constantly. You have to regain the mind of Christ. Then you've got to get fuel. You've been getting fueled. You've been getting recalibrated. All that's happening even now while you sit here. And then we're going to have to be rearmed. This is giving you another armament for the battle. But it's specifically to the mission that you're involved in. And then you've got to be briefed. You've got to know the times and seasons, the weather report, what the enemy's doing. All that kind of intel comes out before you are launched. And then the launch process itself is a combination of two things. One, there's the force within you from the fuel that's basically a controlled explosion that's waiting to happen. 
and you're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, that builds up until the catapult, which is powered by the strength of the carrier, that catapult can throw an SUV one kilometer out into the sea. That plane cannot take off on its own. And the catapult won't work alone. It's combination together, that plane goes from zero to 165 in two seconds. And with that, you take off to your assigned mission. Because we don't have enough pastors, teachers, prophets, etc., to do what they got to do. We need the body doing that for the harvest. And then, of course, you've got to maintain an open comm, the communication, because all that intel is coming through here. Chuck, a lot of it is coming through. What's going on with the enemy, the battle, the times and the seasons? That's being communicated. The, the carrier's in contact with satellites, with AWACS. There's a lot of intel going on that's connecting in with those that are out on assignment. So we keep that open comm so they don't just go off onto the horizon to never, never. So this cycle goes around and around and around. And each time, it's the same process. The landing, the recalibrating, the refueling, there's repairing going on, the briefing, the launching, and the open calm. And it's hosting the presence of God is where that happens. Okay, a couple other things. Course changes with a carrier are expected. You're expected to be in motion. You know the only way you can get a plane to take off is they turn the carrier into the wind into the resistance. So those changes, the new missions and assignments are anticipated, they're not fought. There's not that resistance, you're aware that it's gotta happen. The tur turnover in the crew is normal and expected. We have to stop getting possessive about the people God sends to us. They're there for a time. I don't own you. You're owned a kingdom. I'm getting flashed one minute, so I'm walking through this fast. You're assigned for a time and it's expected. Bless you, you bring your gifts, your abilities, your skills, you pour those out, you get the training, you get the understanding, you're gonna see the fivefold how that works, then you may have to rotate out. It's good, bless you. We have a lot of people that come to us and they're still very active in all these different churches around the place and we want them moving in that for it. Okay, we've gotta get more and more of this cross-pollinization that's happening. And then this is important, a carrier never goes out alone. It's always part of a carrier strike group. In that group, there are at least one cruiser, two destroyers. There's a submarine, supply ships, and there's an admiral on board. Those will represent other ministries, businesses, other alliances that you have. You're working together. There are some that aren't supposed to be carriers. You have to embrace the other model that's out there. Okay, so here is the picture. Okay? Now, let me tell you, the truth of the matter is, those sheep can be those planes. And that structure can become that carrier. Not everyone is supposed to, but if they want and they have the heart, Elaine's gonna to talk to that, that transformation has happened. It's shifted. But let me just caution this, please. This is about a commitment that you must take. Oh, go back, sorry, went up there. This for us was not a sermon, it's not an ant campaign, it's a functional identity. When we meet together, we call it the flight deck, and there's a picture of a carrier because we want them constantly aware this isn't the main deal. This is to get all that you need so you go out and do the main deal. Yeah. We're an aircraft carrier. Yeah. You're projecting that power out there farther beyond. So, a couple quick points. Functional key. We do, this tells people why we do, why things change, why people come and why people go. We gotta get over the get people going part. And that why we are ascending center. So, an aircraft carrier, and by the way, with a huge contingent of angels. A freedom outpost, we found this out later, scared the tar out of me. I didn't know that part of what we were dealing with was a massive contingent of angels that were assigned. They're some of the craft that are on that aircraft carrier. This is part of an image, it's a new parable for a new wineskin. So when people come and say, well, what do you do? And I say, well, we're not like an institutional church. We're like an aircraft carrier. People fly in, they get what they need, recalibrate, refuel, repair, they get briefed, and we launch them back into their mission because that's where it has to happen. Okay?
That is awesome. Give a shout. I love it. Oh, praise God. Good job, Stephen. Thank you. What a team.